dinner party should be fun. We should not be stressing about what to serve for dessert. So I thought I had to show you my beautiful death by chocolate platter featuring a spiced Razal Hanu brownie. Now, this might be perfect for if you have a store-bought brownie and you didn't have time to bake your own, but it is all about presentation. I love having quick, easy, and very glamorous desserts to serve to the uh, friends and family. So what we need to do is, I've already got a brownie, which I have made. Now, like I said, a store-bought brownie would be absolutely fine, but it's all about the plating and putting it together where we can cheat and lie to our guests and make them think that we have worked very, very hard. Now, having different plates to serve this on will be um, lots of fun and you can be as inspired as you want. So I've got a black slate plate. I've also got this beautiful bowl. Imagine serving a death by chocolate platter in such a beautiful big bowl. They'll be very excited indeed. Um, in order to get our brownie to look a little bit more expensive than it actually is, what we're gonna do is, you need to grab some cooking chocolate, so baking chocolate, but grab the best quality that you can. What you're going to do, it's either going to be in buttons or it's going to be like this where you've just been able to break it up um, out of the little cubes. And then what we're going to do is either over a double boiler, you can use a double boiler and melt that down. Or if you just want to cheat and be lazy, like me, you can pop it into your microwave just for a minute. Now, even though it's been in for a minute, it does not look like it is melted. So you can see it's still in its little squares here, but if you just give it a little, a little stir through, you will see that it actually um, is melted. And if you overcook chocolate, it'll go crumbly. It's when we call it scorched chocolate. And the only thing you can do with that is eat it, okay? So it'll never go smooth again. So what you can see I'm doing here is just getting it nice to a nice, um, glorious paste and now I'm going to show you how to bling this up. So what we need here is either a tray with some greaseproof paper or if you have one of these little flexible boards this is going to be very handy and of course I have a blue one because that matches my kitchen. So these little silicon ones you don't have to grease them. Um, you can pour the chocolate which has been beautifully stirred together and it's beautiful and smooth um, and you can use your favorite chocolate, so whether it's a dark chocolate or a milk chocolate, even a white chocolate. Um, when we're doing a death by chocolate platter, you can use any chocolate you like. So now it's in a little puddle. Now this is not tempering chocolate. Tempering chocolate is when we handle coverture chocolate. A cooking chocolate has the oils in it, so it's going to set to snap um, all by itself just with a temperature. Okay, so what we're going to do here is just using a spatula or even a knife or even the back of a spoon. All I'm doing is painting it out to the edge of the board um, or into a nice rectangle or square. And we don't want this chocolate to be too thick because I wouldn't mind a thick piece of chocolate if you're gonna take your uh, kilojoule intake seriously. You can have as much um, chocolate there and as many kilojoules as you want. But what I want here is I want an even thickness, so not too thin, not too thick. Um, we don't want them too thin because they will obviously break. And what you need to have ready here is a little bit of bling for your chocolate. So when I say bling for chocolate, things that would go really well with the chocolate and sort of pop out the color and the personality a little bit. So things I like to use are things like pistachios or petals. Um, you can even use those cute little um, sprinkles that you get from your baking aisle at the uh, supermarkets, but it really just depends on uh, what you, which, whichever look you go for, so you, you can decide. You can also use freshly sliced berries, like strawberries, or even freshly si sliced figs, but you then have to serve that on the same day. And I like to do this kind of thing in advance so that on the night of the dinner party, I don't have to stress. So, now I've got, a little bit of bling. We're gonna use these cute little chocolate buttons. And if you're OCD, look away because I just throw these on wherever they land. You can measure them, of course, um, but have a little bit of fun. And we don't want too much on top there. Often less is more. So it just can be nice just to have those as a contrast. 
Now, I've got some beautiful fresh petals out of my garden. By all means, if you have the dried ones, you could throw those on. And of course, you don't have to use these at all. But I've got these beautiful little pink snapdragons and they look fantastic on here. Um, you literally, all you need is some scissors and I do a quick little chiffonade cut. So you can use those chefy terms uh, if you want. And a chiffonade cut basically is um, any ribbon cut with scissors or your knife. And you can see that it just shreds it on there and gets it to cover it nice and evenly. And I obviously went, like I said, for that bright uh, pink. Now, the next thing I can use are pistachio kernels. Now, always make sure if you don't use these often and you saw me sniff that, you want to make sure that these are nice and fresh. Now, uh, pistachios are perceived to be very expensive. So when you say to them, it's a pistachio dust on top of the chocolate, they are going to think you went um, very expensive on them. But it's very economical, as you can see, because one or two little pistachios on your little microplane is going to give you fantastic coverage and it won't break the bank. So that's fantastic. Cheap and easy, my two favorite things um, when I'm cooking. So with that lovely pistachio, it's bright green and is beautiful. And it's really going to pop that chocolate um, color out. So I think that is um, enough. Like I said, there's so many different things you could do on there. So theme your chocolates. Now, all that needs to do is it just needs to sit to the side in your kitchen if it's a lovely cool day. But if you're in a hotter climate, the fridge or freezer will do the trick. So you can pop that into the fridge or freezer and it should set in a few minutes. Now, of course, like they say in the movies, here's one I made earlier. So you can see this one here has set nicely and I've done exactly the same thing as I did to the last one. So what we're going to do is just cut it into little squares. Now, um, it depends on the size of your brownie and it also depends on um, how many people you're serving. You might need to do two or three uh, trays of this. So if because of the lights or if it's really hot, it has gone a little bit soft, pop it in the fridge or freezer and it'll pop right up. So I've popped those into the fridge or freezer. There's always time for a little sip of your drink. Beautiful. Now, we've got time to do our beautifully presented plates. Now, this is what the chefs um, are good at. And this is what I want you to become good at because it's really, really easy. What I've got in here is just a little bit of dairy cream. And what I've popped into that is just some vanilla bean paste with those beautiful little black speckles in there. I've got my little, this is actually a cheese board. Um, or a black slate plate and like I said you can use any plate you want and what we're going to do is just putting the cream into a spoon what you're going to do is a lovely dramatic contrasting drizzle onto the plate and as you can see that was dead easy you can do the same into this lovely blue plate so it's often nice to have different styles so that you can rehash the same recipe again and again now while that chocolate is setting um, I'm just going to grab some of this lovely brownie of course try and warm it up before you serve it because that chocolate eats so much better when it's warm um, nice and easy to handle um, for me now I'm going to pop that into the plate now you can see here I've got some gorgeous uh, berries I also wanted to teach you how to do some chocolate curls so if we're going to say uh, oh I should eat that if we're going to say death by chocolate we really want to deliver on that promise so you can see here I've got one of those 200 gram uh, chocolate blocks this is the, one of the easiest um, things to do so please don't be intimidated what I've got is one of my you can use a palette knife or one of your chef's knife and what I'm going to do is just popping it against my body there just to keep it straight is we're just going to pull some beautiful curls and you can see oh that's very beautiful you can see how it's curled up on the knife there. Guys, this is really easy. So please try it. Um, obviously, the block will probably break and you'll have to eat the rest, but that's probably not going to be a problem for you. Um, the chocolate curls can either go on the side of the plate. I'm going to do a few more just for the inside of our little brownie house here. And you can pull these in advance. So these can be done in advance if you're one of those stressed out chefs that when people are looking at you, um, you know, you're crying and drinking excessively. Um, so we can do that in advance.
Great, so these are lovely and cold and easy to handle. Now I've cut them into little squares and basically what I've done is I have got some lovely ice cream. Now, a beautiful store-bought vanilla ice cream or you can use my lovely ice cream recipe. Um, now, that is going to eat really well. It's basically also going to keep our little chocolate tiles nice and chilled. Now, we can actually start building that just by using some lovely fresh berries. Now, I'm going to put these lovely berries onto the plate. They're going to look lovely and dramatic. Now, um, raspberries, strawberries, whatever you have. However, be a bit more creative with your strawberries. I find that strawberry halves or slices are very old fashioned, very 70s, and I think we can do better. So what I've done here is I've actually cut our beautiful strawberries into a brunoise cut, which is a very chefy word. So that'll just look a little bit more chefy than a half a strawberry or anything like that. Also, they look pretty beautiful when you have a lovely big slice like that. So be a bit more creative um, with your cuts and make it look more chefy. Now, the last thing we need to do is you could even put a few of those in there, but with our little chocolate tiles, these here are pretty much the same size. We are going to pop them on the side of this ice cream and I'm just squishing it to keep them together like that. And as you can see, it all sticks together miraculously. Now, um, I think that your guests would be very impressed getting their own death by chocolate platter with a glorious um, chocolate brownie. And this could be done way in advance. You could have all of your chocolate in the fridge, in the freezer, ready to go. And plating them up will be an absolute breeze. You could even get your guests to plate them up themselves. Enjoy, guys. This is my death by chocolate platter featuring a spiced Rosal Hanu brownie.